Vancouver Convention Center is located on the water, right downtown. Um, it's circled there. It has a green rooftop. It's a beautiful building, and um, we'll go through some other pictures of it. Um, off to the right, you can see a little float plane airport. Um, apparently, it's the world's largest one, so it's kind of neat. You can watch these little planes taking off and landing on the water from the convention center, um, as well as cruise ships and people kayaking and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of activity on the water. There are two buildings in the convention center. Um, the west building is where pretty much all of the summit's going to take place. It's the newer building. It was um, just constructed for the 20, 2010 Olympics. Um, so it's, it's really modern and new. And then the older building, the east building, we're going to have some meet, sponsor meeting rooms over there, um, as well as perhaps some ancillary events and stuff. Um, these two buildings are connected by an underground tunnel. They're right next door to each other, um, but they, both of those buildings encompass the convention center. So this is a picture from the interior of the expo hall. Looking out, the, there's one wall that's all windows, and it's a pretty nice view. Um, we're planning to build a little bit of a park in the expo hall like we've done before. This one will be uh, more along the lines of Vancouver's Stanley Park, so it'll be a little bit more rustic and um, it should be a nice place for folks to hang out. This is a shot um, that I pulled off the web. It's, um, if you go to Vancouver Convention Center's website, you can actually see a Google Street View of the whole interior of their building and give yourself a little virtual tour. Um, this is the Expo Hall room. So as you can see, it's just one big space. There's no hidden pillars or walls or anything like that in there. It's a really nice big room. And the far end of it is that wall of windows. Here's another shot of it um, standing from the windows looking back towards the entrance. The very far back side, you can see the entrance right there, the main entrance. <clears throat> And this is an exterior shot looking at it. Um, all of these lights right here were those lights hanging inside the room. So you can just kind of see it's a really nice space, um, great views, and it's going to be really hard for us to compete with this in the future. <laughs> it's a very nice convention center. Here's um, a little bit of a layout of the venue. So level zero is below street level. It's your traditional, what, what you would think of as an expo hall kind of warehouse. Um, style room and we're going to build a theater down there for the keynote and then the other part will be used for buffet lunch to be able to feed the masses. Um, so that's where we'll have like the large lunch seating. There will also be some other lunch areas throughout the venue, but that's the main one downstairs. And here is the main floor. Um, this has a lot of the action happening. Um, down here on the right side of the info desk and the left side of registration are the main two entry points to the building. That's where folks will be walking in and then registering. And right across from registration is one of the entrances to the expo hall. And then as well over here to the left is the stacker swag store. So that's where everyone, after they've registered, will go and pick up their apparel giveaway item. And then further up, there are two other entrances here to the expo hall. And this is that wall of windows at the top. Um, then uh, off to the side over here, we'll keep all of these doors open to the expo hall, and we will have you know, lots of kind of tables and chairs. People can, can get grab-and-go lunches over here and, and hang out. We, we may tent an area out here to kind of extend to the patio. That's TBD right now. There's some other options in here. It's a real nice space, lots of windows. Um, this is all hallway. And then you come around here, we've got some Headline sponsor meeting rooms um, and probably a couple of other things, perhaps V brown bags, some other stuff happening there. You come around the hallway. This is where you'll enter kind of the main conference um, session. So from here on, you're going to need a full access pass to, to go down this hallway. Um, and then at the very end is one of the first of four sponsored lounges, which we'll review later. But this is kind of a point. Again, lots of windows here, nice view, and um, a great area to hang out. That's the main floor, level one. Then going up the escalators to level two, these are the two kind of escalator main points right here down at the bottom. Entry level is where is a, a very big staircase coming in from the expo hall over here in that, that side area. And all of this will be main conference. 
Um, right here, room 208-209, that's one room. The air wall will be removed. And that is the large room for the full day sponsored track. It holds about 120 people. We'll review that in a minute. Um, and then room 210 is the slightly smaller room. It holds about 80 people and it's for the half day sponsored track. Right across from that, you'll see the SOMA lounge. Um, there's windows right there as well. Um, and that's, that's one of the sponsored lounge lots. And then coming around the corner, our current plan is to kind of partition a little bit here and turn this into the design summit um, like we normally have, um, as well as operator sessions going on in there. Um, again, you know, nothing's really final on exactly how, where we're going to put these rooms yet, but this is our current plan. And then further up um, down here would be the Yale Town Lounge, which is basically the design summit lounge, and it's very large, nice space. Um, so that's where they'll be hanging out. We may also provide some lunch in this area, but that's to be determined as well. Moving on to the booth. We have five levels, um, like we've had before. Um, this time, all of them include a table. We, we don't have any of the no table options this time. So um, startup and event are essentially the exact same offering. There's just different price points. To qualify for a startup, you um, need to be in business for less than three years and have um, less than $5 million USD in revenue. Um, so that's the main differentiator there. But otherwise, you receive the exact same benefits. The headline sponsor will have um, a 20 foot by 15 foot booth. Um, the speaking opportunity is a 10 minute presentation during keynotes, either Monday or Tuesday as well as a 90-second pre-recorded video that will play during keynote. Um, and then you have the opportunity to add on a breakout track, and then the usual kind of promotion on our website, and a 100-word paragraph inclusion and pre-summit email blast. And, um, and then also you can have a video, a 90-second video, without audio that will be playing on screen throughout the, the center. There's a lot of flat screens and throughout the hallways and stuff. And so we'll use those to do some advertising and play these videos. So we'll get 10 full access and 10 keynote marketplace passes. This is an example of the Intel headline booth from the Paris Summit. So all of the different things you can do in there, you can you know, add in your custom counters and monitors and, and all of that stuff is extra, but um, it's kind of a big space. The premier size is 15 by 10. Um, this one includes one 40-minute breakout session um, and a 60-second pre-recorded video without audio that will be playing on those, those monitors throughout the venue, as well as the opportunity to add on a half a full-day sponsored breakout track and the opportunity to kind of upgrade, if you will, or increase your booth size by five feet of width um, in the expo hall floor. And then you'll get eight full. Um, access and you know, marketplace passes. Here's an example of a premier footprint, not fully set up. Sorry, Fujitsu. <laughs> Here's just a picture of one. Um, and then you can upgrade for, for $20,000 to the size. Spotlight 10 by 10, um, it includes a 60 second pre recorded video, no audio that will also be playing on those monitors, um, and then to, the opportunity to increase your booth size and then to add on a breakout track, as well as you can also add on a um, one 20-minute demo presentation in the Expo Hall Theater. And then you'll get six of each passes. Here's an example of Spotlight Booth. And then the event and startup, they, they receive the same things. It's a six-foot table. Um, you can add on a 20-minute demo presentation, um, and then you'll get the five full access passes and two keynote plus expo passes. And here's an example. So expo hours. Um, new this time, instead of opening the expo on Monday morning, we're going to hold it and open on Monday afternoon, evening um, at the end of sessions. We're going to do a grand opening for the booth crawl happy hour. So that means that all of the sponsor booth staff have during the day, Monday, um, show hours to set up booths. So the expo hall will be closed off to attendees, only registered booth staff will be able to have access to get in there to set up the booth. And then the venue catering teams can get in there to load in the food um, and drink for the booth crawl. And then we'll do the, the big 
grand opening for that. It will be approximately 6 o'clock on Monday evening. And then from then on, the, the expo hall will be open on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, we, we request that all booths be fully set up and ready to go by 4.30 on Monday, and then we can kind of do like a walkthrough and make sure everything's in place um, before we open the doors. We also will have you know, the availability on Sunday for sponsors to check in and, and come into the venue and, and start getting things ready as well. But the extra time on Monday should be helpful for travel. So here's kind of the, the overview of the schedule. So Monday it's set up. Evening, we'll do the booth crawl. Tuesday, the expo will be closed on, during um, keynotes in the morning. And then it will open immediately following keynotes and be open the rest of the day. Wednesday, it will be open the entire day. That will be the longest day for um, scheduling booth staff. And then Thursday, it will be open until the conclusion of the afternoon break, which is around 4.15, 4.30-ish um, approximately. And then from then on, you can do t booth teardown. So the Monday booth crawl is um, a pretty popular crowded event. <laughs> Um, most of the attendees go to it, so um, it's a great opportunity for sponsors to provide food and drink and, um, and draw folks over and talk to them and mingle with them. We, um, we usually do some sort of gamification um, to encourage attendees to, to, attend, to go to all of the booths that are offering food and beverage. So usually a QR scanner type game, we'll probably do that again. The prize has been pretty nice. Um, it includes like a, a full trip to this next summit. So um, the winner in Paris receives a flight and hotel to come to the Vancouver summit. So um, anyway, it, it encourages folks to go in and participate. We'll have more information on the F and D and all of that after you confirm your sponsorship. We'll put you in contact with the venue and you can place your orders directly with them. And we can help you with quantities and, and all of those recommendations. So we have a whole lot of add-ons. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, we, we have these. We're also open to brainstorming other ideas that are not listed if you want to present any ideas to us. Um, but I'll go through a few of these and then I can answer questions at the end. The coffee breaks. Um, so we will have an official coffee sponsor like we usually do. Um, $50,000 for the week, which is Monday through Thursday. Um, we will probably have some sort of a, co a coffee bar in the middle of the expo hall um, that will be a little bit more established of a presence than just kind of um, a coffee station. And so we're still fleshing out our ideas on that, but um, it, it may be like a coffee espresso bar near the headline booth um, or in the park area at the expo hall. So um, that will be there as well as all the other stations in and around the expo hall are sponsored comes with a monitor this time, so you can play um, content on a loop with no audio um, at that monitor. Then we have um, branded activity stations. This is something new. We, we started in Paris. Um, it's an opportunity to kind of have a presence separate from your sponsorship booth. Hi there. I'm sorry, my phone dropped, um, but you can hear me now. I'm going to double check that. Can you can let me know? Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, the branded activity stations, um, these are $18,000 each. It's something new that we started in Paris. Um, it's an opportunity to have 
kind of an additional branding and um, kind of an engagement kind of event outside of your booth. So if you want to do a challenge game or an interactive gamification piece or just something like that, you can, um, you can pitch this idea to us as, as a branded activity station and we, can, we will decide where it goes. It will probably be outside the expo hall um, in some of the hallway space, the lounge, lounge walk, walk through space um, near the expo hall, but um, we can work with you on all of those details. Um, this is the opportunity to do those sorts of things. And then separate of that, if you wanted to do a beverage, like for example a smoothie bar or something like that, that is $5,000 to have a presence like that um, plus the cost of you know, providing the food and beverage um, is additional. But those we can work with you as well where those are located, those may be inside the expo hall. Um, but it's all obviously a nice um, benefit for the attendees. So we have, um, as you've seen, pictures of the venue. Um, it's, it's a really lovely space, and there's lots of nice views and big, and just huge hallway space, essentially outside all of the meeting rooms, and breakout rooms. So we want to take advantage of this and kind of put in some soft seating and turn them into lounges and bring in some of the look and feel of the van community. Um, there's several neighborhoods around Vancouver that are really popular, and I've listed some out here, um, Yaletown, Granville Island, Soma, Gastown, et cetera. Um, so we plan to, to take this space, bring in some kind of theme it a little bit to have some elements of those neighborhoods, as well as like some, a map of that, that neighborhood in Vancouver and information about it. Um, and then it's a sponsorship opportunity um, for sponsors to come in, and then you can do any kind of neat, unique branding, um, is, which is an additional cost. But if you wanted to do like window clings or custom pillows or custom blankets or um, you know cocktail napkins, and then we will provide up lighting and the furniture and then power strips at all of the chairs and seats so folks can hang out in there. Um, but they're pretty large spaces, and the details are all in the prospectus. One of them, um, actually two of them, include um, indoor-outdoor. So there's um, a covered balcony off of two of them. One of them, the Granville Island one, will include fire pits on that balcony. So um, it, I know it'll be May, but it'll still be a little bit chilly outside. <laughs> so it's a good opportunity to maybe offer hot cocoa and, and have branded blankets or something. But um, these are kind of nice spaces and, and really encourage um, the, the companies that have some extra dollars to to look into this opportunity in great spaces. And then here's kind of the configuration of their shapes. Um, so there's, it's kind of hard to see, but there's more details in the prospectus, but they're, they're all very large areas. Um, and then here you can kind of see an outdoor shot of the, um, the venue. There's the, the top arrow pointing towards the Design Summit Yale Town Lounge, and then the, the lower um, arrow is pointing towards the Granville Island Indoor Outdoor Fire Pit Lounge. Um, so they, they're both right there with great views. Um, we have a travel support program, kind of switching gears, um, and it's something we've offered for the last few summits. It's, it's a great opportunity for folks whose companies won't fund their travel to the summit or they work for a startup or for whatever reasons, um, but they are very actively involved contributors and and we really think that their, their presence is needed at the summit, um, particularly the design summit. So we have um, sort of just like a scholarship program, the whole application process. There's a committee of people that review the applicants and we decide who gets what versus flights or hotel or both, um, and then um, help bring them into the summit. So the name sponsor of this program will get a lot of signage around the summit, um, as well as mention in Jonathan Bryce's keynote on Monday morning, um, as well as pre-summit email blasts and, and any other kind of unique ideas that you can come up with, we're open to it. But it's a very important program to us. Um, it costs a whole lot more than what the sponsorship dollar amount is listed at, so um, it's very helpful to the foundation to support this one. The Women of OpenStack event, um, it's, it's become more popular, I feel like, for each time of the them for the last three or four summits, um, and it's a great opportunity to get the women who are attending the summit together to network 
um, we try to do it the day before the summit starts so that everyone can kind of meet each other at the beginning of the week and then um, you know, get to know each other more throughout the summit. As you know, um, just in the tech industry in general, there's not a whole lot of women. Um, so we have less than 10% of the attendees are, are women at our summit. So we're trying to grow that number, but we also want to make women feel welcome and empowered and pro provide more opportunities in and, and many ways throughout our summit through speaking and, and leadership and other things. But um, the networking event is, is really important and special to us, and, and we, we would love for someone to help support that. Um, IBM helped support it in Paris, and it was a lovely happy hour event on Sunday evening in a great venue. So we're looking at different ideas and, and venues for Vancouver, but it'll probably be on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening before the summit kicks off. So um, for the Spotlight event and startup sponsors, the kind of paid speaking opportunity at our summit is this 20-minute demo presentation. We will build a theater inside the expo hall. Um, this picture is from the Paris Expo Hall, and you can see crowds gather around and watch. We also record these presentations and then post them on our website and our YouTube channel, um, just like all these summit sessions. Then for the headline premiere and spotlight sponsors, you guys have the opportunity to add on a full or half-day sponsored track in those rooms that I showed you earlier on the map. Um, the full day track, has, that room has a capacity of 120 people, and the half day track room can hold 80 people. These are nice rooms. They have a lounge right outside those rooms. Um, but a couple things to note is that the speakers for these tracks will not receive a free speaker code, um, just like the other speakers do for the breakout sessions. So you'll need to make sure that they are registered. And it's also these rooms are only accessible to full access pass holders. So um, keynote and marketplace pass holders won't be able to attend. So we do have a few private meetings. Um, these are located in the other building, the east building that I showed you earlier. Um, there's not a whole lot of them, um, but we do have a few, and we will rent those out for $4,500 each. Um, there's a limit two per company. And you'll have the room for Monday through Thursday during show hours. Um, it'll come with you know, your basic table, chairs, power, Summit Wi-Fi will be the same network that's over at the other building. Um, all of that will be streamlined. Um, it is a little bit of a walk. It's about 15 minutes um, to walk over there, maybe 10 if you're speedy. But um, it, it is connected um, through an underground kind of tunnel walkway. Um, or you can just walk outside on the sidewalk and go next door. Um, but it's right there, and um, those will probably go quickly. So if you are interested in one, I, I recommend you, you add it to your contract when you sign. So the off-site evening events, um, we all know that evening events are a very important part of the summit experience for attendees. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody who hosts one is successful. Um, and as the, the summit has grown, we have quite a few attendees showing up these days. So it's, it's pretty difficult for any one sponsor to host um, an event that can accommodate the majority of the attendees. So therefore, we're kind of opening up this time and making it free. It's not a paid add-on. You just need to be a sponsor and then provide us your evening event details and we'll list it on the agenda. So you'll need to have a minimum capacity of 200 people to be considered and follow our code of conduct, which we will send to all of the sponsors. Um, and then also, the evening events cannot conflict with official summit events. So it can't conflict with a Monday booth crawl. It will need to start at 7.30 or later on Monday, and at 6.30, 6 6.15 or later, Tuesday through Friday, if you want to host one. Uh, happy to answer questions as well. So um, here's a few other reminders. Our call for speakers um, is open right now. The deadline to submit is set your ninth, so please encourage your teams and colleagues to submit. Just go to openstack.org slash summit to be able to find all of the information. You can submit right there on our website. Um, it's, let's see, the timeline is set up where we will have, we'll close the call for speakers on February 9th, and then we'll open voting for the OpenStack community to vote for their sessions that they would like to see presented, and that will happen later in February. 
And then we will have track chairs who kind of are subject matter experts that ultimately look at the voting, look at the kind of things at a higher level, and, and make the decision of which, which sessions get accepted. There, um, there's a lot of submissions that usually roll in, and there's only so many slots due to you know, the, the hours that we run the summit and the, the, uh, the amount of rooms in the building. So obviously not everyone is going to get accepted, but, um, but we do encourage folks to submit talks, and, and we are working um, on creating other speaking opportunities outside of our summit as well. So more on that later. Um, then the, our goal is to get the summit agenda published in late March, and that's when we email everyone to let them know whether or not their talk was accepted. Um, but if you have their talk accepted, we'll receive a free code to register to attend the summit. Um, those whose talk was not accepted are encouraged to submit um, other talks um, via V Brown Bag is one one avenue, and then there's just other opportunities in the the community outside of our summit. So um, along those lines, we are um, hosting a webinar tomorrow. It's um, same time as this one today, 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, and it's hosted by Nikki, Ann, and Diane. They are all very active community members. They've all spoken at our summits before, um, and they are going to provide some tips, best practices, and guidance on submitting a talk. Um, so I encourage you to register for that. If you go to openstack.org slash summit, and then you click on FAQ on the left-hand side, there's a hyperlink out to register for that webinar. Um, it's going to be great. We'll also record that and post it on our website later. So um, hotel room blocks, we have eight hotel room blocks this time. So um, there's a whole lot of hotels located right within walking distance. Um, here's a little map you can see. So the, uh, the west building is where the main conference will happen. It's right there. And then here's the east where um, the sponsored meeting rooms are. And all of these are like just a few blocks away, easy to walk to, a very walkable, safe city, um, and it's very clean. Vancouver's great. I want to move there. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, we have lots of opportunities. You can take the um, hotel URL on our website as a way to book it. If you need to do a large block, then um, email events at openstack.org, and we can um, put you in contact with the right people if you need quite a few rooms. Um, registration, it should open um, tomorrow or Friday. We are teeing it up um, today. So we're going to open those gates. But again, um, if you're a sponsor, I, I suggest you hold off on registering until you receive your free codes and the speakers get their acceptance and all of those sorts of things um, are reasons to hold off, but reasons to do it earlier to, to get in at the lower rate for the, for the prices. So um, prices do increase several times um, between when we open it and the summit starting. So um, it's about 50% off at the early bird rate. So we'll post all of that and those details on our website later this week, but we will be opening it. And in addition to speakers and sponsors, there's um, other categories of folks that do receive free registration. Um, the track chairs, the travel support program recipients, um, the board of directors, and the technical contributors is the largest group. So um, I would, um, you know, before you got your sponsor codes, verify that, that these people don't already fall into one of those buckets and have another code. Um, and then we kind of review the, the travel support program. It's going to be opening up soon. Um, information is on our wiki. So um, if you know of anyone who um, needs to be at our summit who's not going to be able to fund it themselves, please tell them to go check it out. And then um, visa invitation letters. There's lots of folks um, who will need a visa invitation letter um, to be able to go to Canada. So um, we have a process for that. It's on our website right now. Um, just fill out a form, and then we can do some vetting and due diligence, and then follow up and provide the invitation letter and, and help them get a visa. So a lot of folks wait to the last minute on this, um, which can be a little hectic on our end. So I really encourage folks to, to do that early. And um, um, again, it says Paris there. should say Vancouver. Sorry about that. Um, and then stay in the know. Um, subscribe to our marketing mailing list. Most of you guys already do, but um, if there's a link to it right there. If you need it, um, you can also put it in the chat box. But um, that's the best way to get updated on information. And then um, send emails to events at openstack.org and follow us on Twitter. So um, answer some questions. Let's see. All right. 
Yes, we will be making the slides available online later um, today um, on the OpenStack.org slash summit website. So for the event sponsorship and startup sponsorship um, level, there is a, um, it, it's a six-foot table, and you can bring in your own quick screen. There's not a printed backdrop for the event and startup level. So um, it, you can add on a monitor, a 46-inch monitor, or you can bring in your own monitor if you want, um, but there's not a backdrop. Uh, yes, there will also be some booth set up time on Sunday. We need to, to kind of work with our teams and see what hours we're going to have to put in and all of that sort of stuff. So um, we'll follow up on that. But, um, but yeah, there should be some set up time on Sunday as well as during the day Monday. Um, how late will the marketplace be open on Monday night booth crawl? Um, so it will probably be open for approximately an hour and a half. So if we open it at 6, run until 7.30. Um, we need to, to line out the schedule exactly to see when sessions will end and when we will open the booth crawl, but usually about an hour and a half. The exact show hours, again, um, we will post those soon. Um, we need to line out the exact schedule. So um, they usually always starts around 9 a.m. and ends around 6 p.m., um, but that includes keynotes on Monday and Tuesday that run from approximately 9 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. So um, it's all a little bit adjusted depending on, um, you know, when we start and how many sessions are in each day and all of those things, but we'll be doing that soon. So I would just bank on 9 to 6 um, are the show hours, and then the expo hours will be open on Tuesday after keynotes, the rest of the day, all day Wednesday, and then Thursday leading up until um, afternoon break, when afternoon break is usually around 4.30. Um, is there a startup or exhibitor picture that shows a wall? Um, I'm not sure exactly. Um, oh, you mean, I'm not sure if you mean a chalkboard or what. Um, startups and, and event level do not have a backdrop printed, but we, in the past, we provided these seven-foot tall chalkboards for every sponsor. Um, we still haven't decided exactly what our plan is, um, if we're going to bring in those chalkboards or not. Um, some people love them, some people do not. <laughs> so um, we will let everyone know um, pretty soon on, on exactly what will be in your booth and if we're providing those chalkboards or not and, and all of those details. Okay. For the sponsored paid sessions, can you do the rooms based on sign-up? Um, okay. So we actually discourage sponsors from putting some sort of RSVP or sign-up on your sponsored tracks or premier sessions um, because, you know, if you're doing it, we want all of our sessions in our summit to be open to all full access um, badge wearers. And if you do that, then there will be some people who register for it who don't show up, and there will be other people who didn't register on your RSVP who do show up, and, and you'll just kind of have a bottleneck at the door checking names, and then you'll also have frustrated people. So I just, I don't, I recommend not requiring an RSVP or asking for one, and, and just um, if you want to scan badges at your sponsored track door, you may be able to, but you just, the, the only thing we do not want is for people to to slow entry and exit of that room, like traffic flow. It just needs to move quick. So um, I, I discourage asking for RSVTs for sponsored sessions. So um, Michelle, you asked about specific topics um, for speaking proposals. I'm not sure if Lauren wants to hop in on any focus we have there, but all the different tracks are listed um, on our website, and then we always you know, usually prioritize user stories, case studies, um, and users. So if you have big users, please let us know, and, um, and we can we usually want to feature them. So, um, so Zane, you asked about why the, the meeting rooms are only open to full access pass holders. Um, well, because of the location of those rooms, honestly, um, they are mixed in where there's other rooms that we may use for sessions. Um, TVV right now, but um, if, if we don't end up using those rooms for anything that's going to be limited to full access holders, then we can make all of those 
add-on um, <clears throat> meeting rooms available to keynote holders, but um, I would say it's just, just to play it safe, I would just count on full access right now. We just can't commit to exactly what we're going to use that space for at this point in time. So. Yes, Gary, we will um, be, when the contract goes live on the 28th, we will put a quantity for um, out on meeting rooms. So if you want to, you can put two in there. We'll do that for anything that you for one, then we'll put a quantity on the contract. Um, Anthony, you asked about the profile of some of the attendees. We actually have a whole slide this time um, in the prospectus. If you just go there, there's a whole demographics page that shows you the attendees for the last two summits. Um, you can see the breakdown there. Um, Carolyn, you had asked about providing your own 10 by 10 booth backdrop. Um, no, we, we do all that on our end. You provide the artwork and we print it and we set it up for you. So when you show up at your booth, it's there. Um, so we don't really allow sponsors to bring in their own booths and backdrops and all of that stuff. We do it on our end. We do the printing and installation. You just send us the artwork. Um, let's see. Do you have a question about opportunities to assist and volunteer at the summit and also special um, media and blogger access? We, we do give out um, media passes um, for depending on the outlet and, and, and whatnot. So we have um, our PR agency kind of vet folks and then provide free badges to, to media and press and, and analysts. Um, and then we also have in the past had kind of a, a blogger media lounge. We don't really have um, a designated space for that this time. Um, it's going to be kind of mixed in with the, the analyst lounge and and, and whatnot, but um, it's not going to be, I guess, there's not going to be a blogger lounge separate from the official media lounge. There's just going to be an official media lounge this time. Um, but yes, we do we do allow passes in for those folks. So you just send us who they are and their outlet. We can probably work with you. Um, Jean, you're asking for larger sponsored track rooms. I would love to, to break down those walls and make bigger rooms, but those are actually the same size rooms that most of the breakout sessions are going to be in the building. Um, there just aren't – most most of the rooms are going to be under 200-person rooms, um, so that's, that's kind of what we have to work with. Um, I'm sorry, but that's, that's what we've got. They are good rooms. They are much nicer than the rooms in Paris, so – um, I think that he'll be pleased in comparison. Okay, someone asked when the media list will be made available. We usually start making this available about three to four weeks before the summit, and then we update it um, about every 10 days or so leading up to the summit. So. We usually don't have the confirmation from the attending media until that time, so it would be kind of false hope if we provided it any sooner than that. Um, Michelle, you're asking about the barcode. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by will it have the same type of barcode, um, but they will be scannable badges and we will have lead retrievals that you rent from us and all of that. So um, maybe we can, can find out that technical information and provide to you, follow up with you. Okay, and um, Dee, you're asking about the Women of OpenStack sponsorship. It does include all of the F&B. It does include branding. Um, basically, the way it's kind of worked in the past is we at the foundation find the venue, tell you, you know, if, as the sponsor, if this is the venue we suggest, and um, you kind of provide your input, approve, disapprove, whatnot. We go with it, and then we, we pick out the, the F and B and, and all of those details, and, and then you just kind of show up and we do branding on cocktail napkins and signage and invitations and, and other things like that. So happy to work with you on that. But, yes, it does include all of the, all of the stuff is included in the 30K cost. Um, 
Okay, Jane, you're asking if we're going to have the same scanners. Um, yes, I think I think we will. I'm not exactly sure though. Um, we may we may have to follow up with you on that one. Sorry, just technical ones. I'm not really sure on exactly yet. Kelly, if you're on the line, feel free to unmute and hop in on the scanners. But we're going to have a logistics webinar, actually, um, in late February. We're going to schedule it soon. But basically, in late February, we're going to have a logistics um, webinar where, where all confirmed sponsors we will invite to attend and go through shipping and um, you know, lead retrievals and the show services website and, and just all kinds of stuff like that, all of the nitty gritty, we'll go through it on that webinar once we have everyone confirmed the exact point of contact for the show. So. So you're asking how many hours are in the full and half day track. It kind of varies a little bit because the, the ones that are scheduled on Monday and Tuesday, there's fewer hours, there's fewer ship sessions on those days because we have the keynotes in the morning and we don't ever have any breakout sessions running simultaneously with the keynotes. So those days sometimes have about six sessions and then the, the um, Wednesday, Thursday can be eight or nine sessions. Um, so. It varies a little bit there, um, but of course there's more folks around on Monday and Tuesday, so kind of a cost benefit there. Let's see if you have any more questions. Is there any stuff? Okay. All right, I think I think we went through the list. Um just want to make sure like to let you all know that we're very excited for the summit and um, we, you know, very appreciative of our sponsors and looking forward to working with you again and seeing you there. Feel free to email me um, if you have any more questions. Uh, oh, I see another question there. <laughs> um, are audio speakers running aloud in sponsor booths? No, um, please don't bring in speakers <laughs> to your sponsor booth um, and try to, you know, run anything within the booth. That's why we have some other of these speaking opportunities outside the booth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to email out the recording um, to the marketing mailing list. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining, and um, look forward to working with you soon and seeing you in Vancouver. Take care. <laughs>